So we just got done working through our first example using the ideal gas law. Okay. There are some uh, certain conditions that can be met that allow us to use kind of a, a shortcut. And we call these values the standard temperature and pressure. And we shorthand this STP, so standard temperature pressure. Now, really, uh, this is covered in section 7.7 .7 of your book when it talks about Avogadro's law, um, which I had you skip. Um, if you need some more information about STP, feel free to go back and read that section. Um, but really, standard temperature and pressure is just going to give us a shortcut, and it's a shortcut that you don't even have to use. Okay, you can always use Povner. Okay, the ideal gas law will always get you where you want to go, no matter what. Um, just the standard temperature and pressure is just a shortcut for us. It it limits or shortens our calculations on occasion, okay. not all the time, um, but basically we have to be at the standard temperature and we have to be at the standard pressure. Okay. So what are those values? So our standard temperature okay, is going to be at 273 Kelvin, otherwise known as zero degrees Celsius. That's a zero. Or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, okay, depending on what units the question gives you. Our standard pressure is going to be one atmosphere. So some other uh, units that you might see of that, you might see it in uh, millimeters of mercury, so 760 millimeters of mercury, or tor, 760 tor. On a rare occasion, kilopascals is kind of common. Um, in chemistry, so you might see that. 101.325 kilopascals. Uh, typically, I would say we stick kind of to atmospheres, millimeters of mercury, and tor. Okay. Now, these are numbers, values, units that you're going to want to know. Okay, those would not be given on a test. All right, so what this standard temperature and pressure allows us to do, okay, is we can then look at the molar volume of a gas. So we like using molar mass when we're talking about chemicals, okay? Because it's really easy to put, you know, solids on a balance or even liquids on a balance and get the mass and be able to convert that to moles. Um, did I say gas? Let me say that again in case I said that wrong. Uh, it's easy to put solids and liquids on a balance, okay, in order to get the mass of that uh, solid or the liquid, and then we can use the molar mass to convert grams to moles. Okay. Now with a gas, okay, it's, it's pretty hard, especially if the density is lighter than air, to get the mass of a gas. Okay. So this is what standard temperature and pressure allows us to do. It allows us to calculate, instead of a molar mass of the gas, we can calculate a molar volume of the gas. Okay. So our definition of molar mass 
okay, of anything, still a gas applies, is the mass of one mole of that substance. For the molar volume of a gas, okay, this is going to be the volume of one mole of gas. Now, because a gas depends on how the, the volume of it is going to depend on pressure and temperature, we have to add a little uh, piece of the definition that we didn't have to for molar mass, but we do for molar, molar volume, is that we're looking at the volume of one mole of gas when that gas is at STP. Okay, so we are specifying a certain set of conditions that have to be met. Now, if we plug in our values for one mole for our N, 273 for our temperature, and one atmosphere in our pressure, okay, and plug that into our Pövnert, our ideal gas law, we will end up with... 22.4 liters. So we have 22.4 liters is equal to one mole of any gas. It doesn't matter what that gas is. If it's at STP and we have one mole of it, it's going to occupy 22.4 liters of space. This is another thing you are going to want to know. All right. So what this allows us to do, hopefully you're seeing this as an equality. Remember back to chapter one? Okay, so this allows us to convert between moles of a gas and the volume of a gas okay, in liters. So if we look at an example, So we have how many moles of aluminum will react with 12 liters of oxygen at STP. And we've been given a balanced chemical equation for this. It's a combination reaction. We take aluminum, metal, oxygen gas to form aluminum oxide. So we have been given, we have 12.0 liters of oxygen and we know that this is at STP and we need the amount of moles of aluminum. So, two things that should pop out right away. One, we know that we're at STP, so our shortcut is a possibility. Then the second thing that should pop out to you, and this is coming from chapter six, is that we are starting with one compound, and we're starting with a value associated with oxygen, and we need to end up with a different compound. 
Okay, we're going from oxygen to aluminum. Do you remember what the only way that we can convert from one compound to another is? Any stems from chapter six? Remember, it's not that little critter that lives in your yard, but it goes by the same name. We want to always get to moles, okay? That's the only way to convert between mole, one compound and another is we have to get to moles. So our pathway, okay, we need to somehow get these liters of oxygen into moles of oxygen, and then we can use our stoichiometry, okay, our coefficients, our multiple factors, all saying the same thing. We need to get from moles of oxygen then to moles of aluminum. So we can use our shortcut here, our STP, to go from liters of oxygen to moles of oxygen. And then we can use our coefficients to get to our moles of aluminum. So this is going to be our 22.4 liters is equal to one mole. And then here, this is our stoichiometry, or basically your coefficients. If you're feeling confident, go ahead and pause the video, try out this calculation. Always worth a try, okay? It's okay to be incorrect because how can you learn if you never make mistakes? Okay. So we wanna start with our 12.0 liters of oxygen. We're gonna set up our railroad. We wanna convert from liters of oxygen to moles of oxygen. I'm starting with liters of oxygen in the numerator, so I need to put liters of oxygen in the denominator. Then I'm going to moles of oxygen, so that goes up top. I'm using my STP, standard temperature and pressure molar volume of a gas. So I have 22.4 liters of oxygen per one mole. Then my last step is my stoichiometry step. I want to go from moles of oxygen to moles of aluminum. And I put my moles of oxygen down in the bottom so that these units cancel. Moles of aluminum up top because that's what I'm going to. And here's where I'm using my stoichiometry. So I'm looking at my coefficients of my balanced chemical equation. So I have a four in front of aluminum yeah, so that's where that number comes from. And then I have a three in front of oxygen. So this three needs to come down for our moles of oxygen. And now I can set up my calculator here. I have 12. Okay. Remember, multiply across, divide down. So I multiply by one. Don't really need to. I'm going to divide by 22.4 multiply by 4, divide by 3. My calculator gives me 0 0.714. I have 2857. I started out with three significant figures, so 0 0.714 is my final answer.